In this video, we will explore how we can move our player using arrow keys as well as the Unity Navmesh system. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. I am using Cakey Dungeon Pack Free Assets, the link will be in the description so I recommend that you check them out. Unity Navigation System allows us to predefine paths for our NPCs where they can go so that we can uh, create more believable movement for them. While usually you will see this uh, system used to direct NPCs to walk towards the player, we can also use it to move our player around our map. Okay, so here is my map that I have created. Those are simple prefabs uh, that I have placed here. The, there is the uh, floor, the walls and some props that I have placed in our dungeon and I have created those doors to show you how we can use navmesh obstacles uh, in addition to this basic system. So we have those props set in our on our map and this is my dungeon as you can see. So first of all to open our navigation window we need to go to our top menu in Unity window AI and navigation. This will open you an additional window that I have docked where my inspector usually is. And this gives us a lot of options here to use to generate our nav mesh on our objects. Right now, if you select bake, you will see that here is the image of a default agent for which the nav mesh will be generated. Now, let's not worry about those settings right now. Let's click bake, which basically would bake our nav mesh. But our nav mesh or our navigation system doesn't really know what objects do we consider walkable or not. So first thing that we need to do is to add our meshes that we want to consider as our map to the navigation system. And we do this by going to the hierarchy and selecting all the meshes in your game or on your map that you want to consider as being included in our navigation mesh. We are going to select the inspector and it, in the top right corner of the inspector, there's this static toggle. We are going to use this expand button and we are going to select navigation static. Now I am changing it for the parent object that contains all the meshes in my, on my map. And I'm going to select change static flag. Yes, change children. Now my objects should be included in the navigation mesh calculation. Now, second thing we need to do is go to our navigation and to our objects tab. Here we can see the default hierarchy, but if we change this filter to be in mesh renders, now by default, if you click on one of those objects, it will be said to be navigation static. Generating mesh off links might be disabled, let's not worry about this, and it might be navigation area when it be said to be walkable. Now walkable means that we can walk on this object. So now if we go to our bake tab in our navigation and select bake, we are going to see that we have created the nav mesh. Now, in case you don't see this uh, blue glow, you might want to turn on gizmos in your scene view. You can also see it in the game view if you enable those gizmos. Now, to control how the nav mesh is created, we can modify the settings here. So, by default, I think the step height is set to be something like 0.4, and if you bake, you will see that, for example, the staircase was not included in our nav mesh. This will mean that where there is no blue tint on top of the mesh, this will mean that we are not going to be able to walk here. So the step height, if we increase it, you can see that part of the stairs were included. If we set it to 0.6, the steps will now be included. But in addition to steps, we, have, we are including the top of our walls, which we have no way to reach as well as now when we have increased the step height our tables are as well included as walkable space now you probably do not want to walk on top of your tables so here again we can go to back to our objects tab in our navigation uh, window and select the mesh renders and we are going to find all the walls so i have all the walls at the bottom and i will select all the wall objects and uh, I will set the navigation area to be not walkable. Now I can do the same selecting those tables. As you can see, I have selected in the hierarchy this table. And in the navigation window, I see this mesh selected. And I will set the navigation not walkable as well as the second 
object I will select uh, not workable for the table and now if I go back to the bake settings in the navigation and bake it again you will see that now there is no navigation mesh on top of our walls as well as not uh, no navigation mesh on top of our tables so now this will mean that our mesh will work fine but I can also see that now our agent is treated as non-walkable object so as an obstacle on our map so let's select it let's rise it up let's bake our mesh and now it is uh, correctly baked and now we need to focus on preparing our agent to be able to use this uh, navigation mesh to walk around it so I will reset the filter from our hierarchy I will close the dungeon and now I will select the agent so here is the agent I have prepared it with the animator so it has some animations it has an audio source as a and as well as the audio helper that will play step sound we do not need to worry about this for now but it has also the nav mesh agent component so if I remove it uh, you can add it by call, uh, selecting add component nav mesh and you should have nav mesh agent here and now it will show you this cylinder around your character you can adjust it by setting the obstacle avoidance so radius uh, setting as well as the height of the uh, cylinder so this will block your character from moving uh, for example where the entrance for example is not high enough not high as the uh, height of your character so you can modify this and make sure that your character can fit now of course you can read more about the nav mesh agent in the documentation since usually it takes a bit of tweaking of those settings to make sure that your character moves as expected the basic settings that you, we might want to change is the steering settings so the speed and the angular speed now i tend to know that i want to have the angular speed about 80 and basically that's it now we need to make sure that our agent can actually move on top of our navigation mesh now to use this nav mesh agent we will need to have a custom script so i have created this agent uh, movement script let me show you what it contains you're right so if you create a new script we will you will have to add two private fields nav mesh agent reference and the animator reference if you have some animations now my animation uses a walk bool value so by default i am in the idle state and i use this bool value to transition to the movement state and go back to the idle state and the movement animation if i select the character uh, the movement uh, the run animation contains some events to play the step sound uh, on certain frames basically this is the whole setup okay so knowing this we can get in the awake the reference to the nav mesh agent and to the animator so that now we can use those in our script everything will happen in the update method first of all i will take the input by getting the input get axis horizontal and vertical which allows us to get the input from our arrow keys on our wasd or a joystick for example now next first check is to check if the input dot magnitude is less or equal to zero which means that player is not pressing any keys so we are going to set the animator set bool the walk bool to false so that i stop playing the animations and i'm going to return now else i'm going to check there are two conditions here first one will be responsible so let me extract it extract method this will be responsible for movement so move and another one, uh, so this else statement will be responsible for the rotation, so rotate. Okay, so first condition is if mathf.abs input y, since this can be minus one or one, if this is greater than 0 0.01, this means that we want to go forward. So this means that we want to move our character. Else, I know that we only want to rotate it. Next, I'm going to check the a private void move method that takes in vector to input now this method will set the animator set bool walk to true since we want to move and we are going to calculate vector 3 destination equals and we are going to get a transform dot position so our position and we are going to add to it the offset we are going to add a bit to our position in this direction so we are going to add plus vector transform dot right so right direction or red axis of our character times the input.x so left or right arrow plus transform.forward of our character so the blue axis 
times the input.y, so up and down arrow. So basically we are going to have our player in our game and we are going to add some offset. For example, if we want to go forward, we are going to create a point in front of our player or to the right or to the left or behind. So basically we are going to get the input and add to the position of our player to give it a bit of an offset in the direction where we want to move. Now when we have this destination, we can set navmesh agent dot destination to be this destination. If we take a look at the documentation of the navmesh agent destination, one functionality is getting the destination, but what we are using is setting the destination, so we request the agent to move to the valid navmesh position that is closest to the requested destination. So basically what we do here in this move method is we are making our navmesh agent move to this destination that is the offset from our current position in the direction where we want to move. Now, if we are not pushing the uh, forward or so up or down arrow, this will mean that I want to only rotate around the axis of the player. So this is this L statement rotate, this will take the input. And this rotate method, what it will do is set the navmesh agent destination to be the transform that position. So we want to stop the navmesh agent from moving our character. We are going to set animator.setable walk to false. And we are going to set transform.rotate. So we are going to rotate our character. And we are passing the Euler angles. X will be zero. Y will be input.x. So right and re or left arrow key times navmesh agent dot angular speed so this is the speed that we have set to be 80 times time dot delta time so we can rotate around and the uh, euler angle on uh, z axis will be zero so we only want to rotate around the y axis okay so those are the main methods and this is the uh, main logic the main arg uh, algorithm of our movement so let's save this and let's try it out okay we are back in unity now, uh, you need to have the gizmo on and navigation selected, navigation tab selected to see this navigation mesh. One addition that I have here is the uh, Cinemachine camera. Basically, to add it, you need to go to Window, Package Manager, and select uh, Package Manager Unity Registry. Let's type Cinemachine. And you will have Cinemachine package here. This you can select the install button that will appear in the bottom right corner of this window. And when you have it, all you need to do is go to Assets or a Game Object, I think, Cinemachine, and select Virtual Camera. It will create for you the Virtual Camera, the Cinemachine Camera, and all you need to do is select it and as assign the Follow and Look at as our Agent Nav Transform. So if you have this, all I did was change the offset in the body section so that we can see our character from this isometric view, and I have increased the white damping to be 2. Now I will select the navigation mesh again, and now we should be able to press play, and you should see that now we can walk on our map using our keys or uh, WASD or a joystick, and everything should be working as expected. So as you can see, there are some gizmos in our scene view, so the blue arrow represents the direction of movement, and the um, a red circular cross represents the destination of our navmesh agent towards which it is moving. And so it should all work fine, you can rotate your character or start moving in a specific direction. Now in addition to the basic functionality of walking, we may want to implement some sort of obstacle in our game. And we can select this and as you can see in our navmesh, we can see that there is a path now. Now if I back off and close those doors, now we will see that the nav mesh is uh, broken and we cannot go through those. We simply need to ensure that our wall that represents the opening is set to be navigation static and non-walkable while the door are not navigation static. And the door needs to have a nav mesh obstacle that has this carve uh, toggle selected so this means that they will carve and uh, or block the navigation mesh in this spot and when they move uh, beyond the smooth threshold they will uh, the nav mesh will be recreated the passage will be created in the spot where before there was the obstacle of the door 
If you are interested a bit more about how to create this opening and closing door, let me know down in the comments. But basically this is it. This is how you would create your navigation mesh movement using arrow keys in Unity. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, and if you want to learn more about Unity, check out my channel and subscribe. Okay, see you in the next video. Take care.